we certainly do as, um, as, as human beings. One of the things we do is we classify. Um, and so even if we were to get rid of the categories of race, for example, but we know we classify people by many different things, um, gender, ethnicity, um, accent, and so forth. I get a whole set of comments about my accent. I sound American now back in Trinidad, and I sound, still sound like a Caribbean person in America. And so I'm sort of homeless uh, from an accent point of view. Um, so classification, I think, is part of one of the things we do. The exhibit talked about the lack of a scientific foundation for race. And I think it's interesting that um, Professor Omi made the point that this is a biological. If you are thinking of science only as biology, that's probably true. But if you think of science as sociology, psychology, you know, those kinds of things, race matters. <laughs> it matters an awful lot. We see it in the achievement gap. We see it in a number of things. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to focus on some work that we have been doing with a, a team um, over a number of years. And this is specific to African Americans, but we have just started to um, extend this work um, to other groups. And what we're looking at is that there's diversity within groups as well as mm -hmm. diversity uh, yeah, among groups. And so this is so, sort of looking at within group diversity. So basically, some colleagues and I uh, have developed a scale um, uh, several years ago called the Cross-Racial Identity Scale. And, and the goal of this scale was to measure um, attitude, r black racial identity attitudes. One of the things that we were concerned about is that a lot of people say that, well, you know, assimilation is bad, you know, Afrocentricity is good, and, and there are these dichotomies that get posed. And we felt that, in point of fact, if we really wanted to understand the racial identity of, of, of this group of African Americans, that what we needed to do was look, look not at single constructs, but really to look at a multiplicity of constructs. And in fact, we would argue that, in fact, each of these kinds of attitudes, assimilation attitudes, miseducation attitudes, anti-white attitudes, that if you are black in America, and you've been in America for any length of time, that you are going to have some level of these kinds of attitudes. You're going to be exposed. Now, it may be that you don't endorse, you endorse some more than others, but that, in fact, you're going to have some level of those kinds of attitudes. And so we came up with the idea of looking at profiles. And we suggest that, in fact, you should look at profiles rather than look at any single score. And so we started investigating that about five years ago. And I'm going to share some of the research that we've done in that arena. Um, I think the doors may be locked. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is a quick view of um, um. from the first study that was done. And I'm going to go into these in just briefly. I just wanted to show you that these are all profiles of substantial groups of African American, in this case, college students, right? And um, as you can see, we, we've labeled them based on the theoretical model that we're using Afrocentricity. This immersion is also called anti-white, low race salience, and so forth. The zero point here is average, average to the sample. And so that the bars below the zero are people whose scores on a particular attitude are way below average, um, you, know, you know, depending on, you know, so a full standard deviation and so forth, or bars that are above average. And I'll go through these quickly, but just to show here that we have, since we have all of them on the same slide, if you look at the Afrocentric profile versus the anti-white profile, for example, what's, what are the differences? Well, we have this difference here on the anti-white profile. This is assimilation. That these people are full, that assimilation attitudes are a full standard deviation below the, the sample. They are seeing themselves as African American rather than American. You know, so that's how they identify. Um, we also look that they're not multiculturalists. And our multiculturalist scale is I am black. It's a black plus scale. I am black and I you know, belong to other groups and so forth. right? Whereas, so, so we label this as anti-white as opposed to this one where these look the same, the anti-white and the Afrocentricity, but assimilation is average and multiculturalist is average. So, so, so what we have here then is all of these different profiles if you look at these. So if, if we look at this group, what we call the low race salience group, these are people who are not putting a lot of attention to race in their lives. The one that's closest to average is assimilation. And the assimilation is I see myself as American first and African American second. And they're saying that, so they're near average on that. But everything else, 
they're saying that, you know, I'm not dealing, I'm not dealing in race. And these are the attitudes that they are going to engage with in, in the world. Um, compared to the multiculturalist who are saying, I'm black and I respect and engage with other groups. These other things are fine, but this is who I am. This, you know, look at where the scores are, right? So we have this uh, profile coming down, right? So uh, Afrocentricity, I'm going to go through because the point I want to make is to show that, in fact, these profiles actually have meaning when we go beyond. And so, so this is a, a study of looking at these profiles and comparing them on ethnic identification. And, and we can see that what's happening here, right? So this is the Afrocentric profile. This is the anti-white profile. These people see themselves as much more identified as African Americans than the individuals who are African American and the individuals who are multiculturalists falling sort of halfway between. Now, on a scale, it may not look like a lot, but from a statistical point of view, the effect sizes between this and this are large. These are people who are seeing themselves very differently in the world, and, um, and that has implications. So when we look again at these profiles, and this is how comfortable are you with the dominant group in society, we have the multiculturalists who are saying, well, you know, they're there, you know. We don't have a preference one way or the other, right? We have the Afrocentrics who are saying, well, we would really, really not particularly engage with them, and we have the assimilation and the self-hating attitudes, these profiles on the other side. And so that we have within this group of African American, and these are, Af again, African American college students, and all of these profiles have been replicated in at least two samples, independent samples. So, so they seem to be general to the population, at least that's what we're arguing. This study um, is um, a colleague of mine has been doing um, this work, and I think that this illustrates it very, very nicely, because in essence, what we're seeing here is that this line here, everything sort of above this line, right, so the, the x-axis, if you want, is, is race important to you. So is race important to you? And everything to the right of this line on the y-axis is you have a positive sense of yourself in American society. And when we, you know, so it's, uh, it's a procedure called um, discriminant function analysis, and we are graphing centroids. And so as we can see, so the people who have a positive sense of blacks in society, you know, that they think society sees, see blacks positively, and who actually race is important to them, we have the Afrocentric people there and the multiculturalists, the black class. The people who have, think that blacks are seen positively in society but do not have, race doesn't matter to them, the assimilation cluster falls there, right? Uh, on the other hand, race is not important to me and I don't like sort of almost like being black. That's our self-hatred group there. And then we have, these are the anti-white and what we call the intense black involvement group. And, and so this, these data are just preliminary. I mean, so we just started doing this work. We found clusters for the first time. We looked for them for the first time and found them in 2006. So this is really new work for us. And, but it's really exciting because it does speak to um, giving us a sense of how can we look at, one, from a psychological point of view, we know, for instance, some of the preliminary work suggested the self-hatred group have much more psychological problems than other groups. So that, in fact, it's not that the cluster may have important implications for psychological functioning. But also in terms of educational functioning, and just two last things and I'm going to close. Um, this is um, a different kind of, this is from a canonical correlation, and the, these are the six subscales from the CRIS, and these are two subscales from another instrument, the multi-group ethnic identity measure. Ethnic identity, strongly identified with ethnic groups, other group orientation, engaging with other groups. And we call this particular profile here a racial ethnic identification. They're not assimilating, not self-hating, they're sort of neutral on miseducation. They're very, there's some anti-white attitudes, uh, Afrocentric. They don't see themselves as multiculturalists. They're very strongly ethnically identified. They don't really want to engage with other groups. Compared to these, are, this now is, by the way, middle and high school students. Compared to this group, which we call grounded multiculturalism, who, in fact, they're not assimilating, which is what a lot of people would argue, miseducation, no self-hatred, no anti-white, no. They don't see themselves as Afrocentric, but they're multiculturalists, are black plus. They have a strong sense of ethnic identity. 
and they engage with other groups, right? And data would suggest from other studies that this group is going to do much better in school than the other group, who is in fact anti-white and in fact so so that in fact within the African American community, and I, I, I and we would argue that probably within all of the communities in the United States, that there are different profiles and these are going to have implications for the way they engage in people, the way.